Welcome to a tutorial on the registers. Okay, so in this uh, tutorial we'll be learning about this particular uh, device which is called registers. Now, well, if I just go a little deeper into the topic then you might be, you know, fascinated to discover that the registers are nothing but a collection of flip-flops. So I might, you know, write it down over here. So registers are a collection of flip-flops. Okay, so now you might think that, well, why do we need a collection of flip-flops? You see, if you have a single flip-flop, okay, now this is basically a single flip-flop, right? Now it has an input pin, okay, a clock. Let's just take the example of a positive edge triggered flip-flop. Let's just take a D flip-flop for example. And it's got an output pin as well, uh, refer to as Q. So now if we just taking a single flip-flop uh, for the time being, then you know that a single flip-flop can store only a single bit of data. So this stores only one bit of data. All right. So how can we store multiple bits of data at the same time? Now the problem is storing multiple data bits. Okay. So I might write that down over here. All right. Yeah, there you go. Storing multiple bits of data. So whenever we need to store multiple bits of data, then we refer to or rather use these registers. Okay. Now you know that flip-flop stores just a single bit of data. And now whenever you need to store multiple bits of data, then you would require many such flip-flops. Let's say if you're going to store a four bit data, okay, for example, then one flip-flop won't be sufficient. Instead, so under this kind of circumstance, you would require four such flip-flops, okay? Where each of these flip-flop units would store just a single byte. So four flip-flops used together, you can store a four-bit data all at once, okay? So uh, this collection of four flip-flops taken together forms what we call a register. Okay, so this is basically the collection of these uh, flip-flops just, you know, taken as a single unit or as a single circuit uh, or as a single storage device is what we call a register. Okay, so now for storing four bits of data, you have four such flip-flops configured as a four-bit register. So this is basically a four-bit register. And now let's say if you have uh, to store, you know, eight bits of data, then you would require a collection of eight such flip-flops together. Okay, just double the size. So in that case, that entire circuit would just be configured or, or maybe, you know, called as an eight-bit data register. Now these are just, you know, flip-flops as you know are single memory units. So the registers are used as, you know, storage units for bigger memory chips. Okay. So in that case, I'm just going to introduce you to the concept of the registers where, uh, you know, they're just defined or rather, you know, differentiated based on the way in which you load and unload or rather, you know, input and output data from it. Okay. So depending upon uh, the methods of data input and output, there are basically, well, four types of uh, these kinds of registers. Okay. So I'm just going to discuss here the types of registers that you'll have. Okay, so the very first type of register is, of course, the the serial in and serial out shift, I mean, register that you have over here. Now, let me just tell you that, well, the registers that we are talking about over here, they're also uh, well, referred to as shift registers, okay, because the data in them, you know, uh, also shifts from one end to the other whenever we are uh, actually inputting or output uh, whenever we just, you know, input and output the data serially. So they're of often, you know, referred to as shift registers. Okay. So as a matter of fact, I'll just give you the information over here. And all the registers that we are going to, uh, you know, check out over here would have a common clock line. So in this example, let me just tell you that all the registers would have a common clock line. Okay. There you go. So this is the line or the input for the clock signal. Okay. So this is an example of a register over here. Now let's just get on with the serial in serial out register. Okay. So let me just tell you beforehand that we're going to deal here with four bit 
registers okay so we're gonna illustrate the entire uh, concept with 4-bit registers so first up we're gonna use you know four flip-flops in order to construct a 4-bit uh, serial in serial out register okay so here we have the circuit diagram for the serial in serial out shift register constructed using D flip-flops okay so just used here D flip-flops to construct the circuit okay so here if you'll uh, you know just take a you know uh, a peek into the circuit then you'll discover that whenever there is a particular bit of data available at the input D1 let's say you have uh, this bit of data over here let's say 1101 uh, one, okay so all right, so let's say the data appears at the input D1, okay? Let's say the LSB, let, this is the LSB, okay? And this is the MSB of the data. All right, there you go. So whenever the data is available over here, okay, at the input of the uh, D1, let's say the LSB comes first, then upon the first clock signal, okay? So when this one appears over here uh, and you get a clock, okay? Then this particular input data one bit okay it is transferred or rather stored by the flip-flop one and immediately this data appears at its output terminal that is q1 so q1 also becomes one okay now the second clock okay now this one the lsb has already been stored next the bit zero comes over here okay so upon the next clock this zero is stored in the position of Q1 and the previous input that is one available from the output of the first flip-flop that is at Q1 goes as input to the other flip-flop and on this particular clock pulse okay this one gets transferred at the output Q2 right so this way zero also gets stored in flip-flop one so now flip-flop one stores zero and flip-flop two stores one so after two more clock pulses what you'll find is that the flip-flop one storing this MSB that is one okay and flip-flop two storing the next number and then the zero is stored in flip-flop number three and one stored, uh, that's the LSB that is stored in flip-flop number four okay so this way the data gets stored in this particular sh I mean register over here and now you might be thinking that well how to get the data out simple use four more clock pulses so after four more clock pulses the data that's the LSB of the data that is one right over here would first go out of the uh, output line that is Q4 because it's storing one right now so after uh, you know four more clock pulses you'll find the entire data available to you as output which is being transmitted serially okay so first of all the LSB sent as the output okay then the zero then the one next to the MSB and finally the MSB is just sent out to the output uh, terminal Q4 one by one each okay so that's why you can just transmit four bits of data with one single wire as an output as also the input so that's why this is this type of you know data transmission is just referred to as serial data transmission so that's how a serial in serial out flip-flop works okay now next up we got the other type of flip-flop I mean register sorry there so we're now gonna discuss about the serial in parallel out type of register okay so now for this type of register that's the uh, serial in parallel out shift I mean yeah shift register you can just call it like that so this is the circuit diagram once again constructed using D flip-flops as you can see over here okay so as usual like the previous example whenever we're just sending the data as input we're gonna be doing that serially so the input occurs in this case the input occurs serially okay that is one bit after the other right so let's say you have uh, you know you know four bit number let's say you just take the same uh, data once again let's say one one zero one that's your data you want to store these uh, I mean in this particular register so what do you do let's say we start with the LSB so let's say the LSB just comes in as the input bit first so whenever there is one appearing as input on the line D1 
then with the clock pulse this one would be stored or rather you know sent to uh, the line QA that's the output from the first flip-flop okay and then zero comes as the input okay and then again on the next clock pulse this one since it just falls on D2 as the input now it gets transferred to the output uh, line QB okay as the output of the flip-flop 2 okay and this zero is just sent to the output of flip-flop 1 uh, that's at the line QA okay and this particular uh, input on the D1 line is the number next to that of the MSB that is the bit 1 once again okay and then upon next clock pulse what happens is that this one gets transferred I mean this particular one that's uh, the output of uh, flip-flop 2 uh, which is now the input to the flip-flop D3 okay on the next clock pulse goes out and becomes uh, I mean and appears on the line QC right over here okay and this particular uh, line that's the QB okay now stores the bit 0 okay which was the input to the flip-flop D2 and now it just appeared as its output on the line QB and next again this one that was the input to the flip-flop 1 okay on the line D1 gets stored on the line QA or rather gets stored by the flip-flop 1 and so appears on the line QA right over here okay so there you go all right and now after this you got the MS appearing as input on the line D1 so we have another one appearing over here so after this clock pulse what happens is that this particular line that's QC holding the bit 1 now which is the input to D4 after the last clock pulse the fourth one this input that is D4 appears on the output line QD so this bit 1 that's the LSB of this particular number or data that we have over here uh, which is of course the LSB is the input to flip-flop 4 on the line D4 and it just gets stored by the flip-flop 4 and it appears on its output line QD so we have 1 right over here okay and in the very same way the 0 would appear on the line QC uh, well something like this we'll have a 0 over here okay just give me some time so there you go we have zero okay and in the very same way we'll have the line QB okay containing the data bit one okay and this particular one would appear on the output line QA okay which is the MSB of this particular four bit data okay and now there are no more inputs at the line D1 and all the four bits have been stored so you can see over here that as soon as the bits get stored I mean when, whenever you just store the entire four bit data in this particular register then all of the bits of this four bit data are available on the corresponding output lines okay so whenever you need to extract the data then you can just make the connection and the data as an output is just available instantaneously right so instead uh, whenever you're just gonna take the output over here then you do you won't need any clock pulse as such okay then you can just straight away take the data by connecting separate wires to these separate lines turning from QA through to QD okay so now you can see that since the data as an output travels through separate lines so what you can call is you can call this as a parallel data output so that's why the name comes as serial in and parallel out shift register because this kind of register they take the data as an input serially and output it parallelly okay so with these two registers discussed here we just come to the end of this particular tutorial and on the next tutorial we're going to be discussing the other two main types of registers that are present in the market okay and are being widely used so till then it's just going to be a short goodbye for now and see you in the next video tutorial bye bye